happy when it rains I feel good when things are going wrong I only listen to those sad, sad songs I'm only happy when it rains I think the first success I had really that opened some doors for me was a band called Killdozer on Touch and Go. They made a god-awful racket, a three-piece band that had this grindy, dirge-like sound. And it was, in particular, a record we did called 12 Point Buck it's, that's the record that Billy Corgan heard and called from the Pumpkins, and Sub Pop called and said, I want you to work with this band Nirvana. It didn't sell very well, probably sold 10,000 copies or something, but there were a lot of other bands that heard it, and uh, that's what opened the door for me to start working with a lot of bands that would go on to have much more commercial success. And probably the first two records that really happened for were Gish, Smashing Pumpkins, followed right by uh, Nevermind. Well, I have been blessed as a producer because I have worked with some incredible drummers in my career. And Jimmy Chamberlain being one, Dave Grohl being another. Different styles completely. Jimmy has this incredible swing, this push-pull thing that unlike nobody I've ever worked with. And the great thing about him and Billy Corgan is they locked in together rhythmically. They really were able to almost turn into a machine the way they played and, and sometimes Jimmy would push the front of the bar and then lay back the snare in the back of the bar so it had this sort of hypnotic thing and the two of them just were really really powerful as a rhythm section you know and, and that's part of the Pumpkins sound was the feel of those tracks you know how the, how the two of them played together. Dave Grohl probably one of the best four, four rock drummers ever you know Dave wrote drum hooks start a teen spirit, you know, that's like, and then he would do those little motifs in the songs, and that's something I didn't even have to tell him, you know, it's like he just knew, I'm going to play a part, I'm going to play the same part going in the chorus, whether it was in Bloom or whatever song it was, he would come up with kind of a signature fill and just nail it, you know, so he made my job and never mind very easy, you know, I, I had not met Dave when we went in to record that, and a few days before I went to Los Angeles, uh, I got a cassette in the mail and Kurt said, Hey Butch, we've got a new drummer, Dave Grohl, he's the best drummer in the world. We're going to play some new songs. And they had recorded on their boombox and I heard it tick, 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 tick and it just distorted completely, you know, because they had built in mics on the boombox. And in the back of it, I could hear that it just sounded super tight and super powerful. Now, I didn't know this at the time, but they rehearsed every day for, I think, about four months, every single day, like eight hours. That's all they did. They wanted to be really tight when they came in. So that first day of recording at Sound City, uh, I, I was blown away. You know, I, I had never really met him before, and we went, walked in, and both Chris and Kurt had big-ass amps, and, and they were going through the PA as well as the vocals, and Dave did not need mics on his kit. It was so loud and powerful and intense. And I remember they played Teen Spirit, and I kind of heard it on the boombox, but didn't really get it. And I just started walking around, sweating. Oh my God! Play it again, play it again. I didn't even know what to say. I had to start thinking, what do, we, what do I need to tell them here? Notes to, to make the song tighter. And there wasn't a lot I had to do with that song, but uh, I was blown away by how good they sounded. And a lot of that was because Dave was just an incredible drummer. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. 